What is good everybody? It is Trey from My Damn Toys here and I just wanted to get on here before the video starts and just give a huge, huge, huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel and everybody that has ever tuned in to watch a video. We finally hit 200,000 subscribers the other day and I just wanted to get on here and thank you guys so very much from the bottom of my heart, from everyone here at MDT, me and my wife and my son Jojo. Thank you guys so very much for the 200,000 subscribers. Huge milestone that I never really even imagined I would ever hit. I just got on here, started making videos and it is just a huge blessing and I thank you guys so very much for tuning in and checking out every video and subscribing and watching and, and just enjoying this hobby of collecting figures and watching wrestling and all of it entwined together and I just love you guys. Thank you guys so very much. Let's get into the video and I plan on doing something big for 200k soon but until we get there, enjoy the video. What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video today, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be doing another fantasy booking style video. You guys know how those work where we just basically take whatever WWE is doing and kind of put my own twist on it. Now I'm not going to say that this is exactly how I would do it. I'm just kind of pitching ideas and I don't necessarily want these things to happen. I'm just kind of going off the cusp and having a little fun with what WWE is doing and fantasy booking it. You know, changing things up a little bit and going with it. I by no means just absolutely want any of this to happen. I'm just kind of messing around and giving you guys some outside ideas that, you know, would be kind of fun if WWE were to do it or outside of the box thinking because some of these things I kind of I'd probably be like oh my god seriously if some of these things happen but today we're going to run through the card I'm not going to break down every single matchup and fantasy book all of them but I figured it would be fun to get on here and tell you guys my thoughts about some of these matches and give you my own fantasy booking ideas behind them first off I will say for both women's matches I would just have Bailey beat Nikki Cross and then I would have Sasha beat Asuka so that you'd have both of them win both women's championships they'd hold all the gold right they'd have both the Raw and Smackdown women's championships they'd own both women's tag team championships obviously so booking that i would probably have them lose the tag team championships at SummerSlam, but and and retain their main championships and then at survivor series you would have champion versus champion that could lead to that so when they lose the tag championships at SummerSlam, that would be the crack in the foundation if you will leading to their championship versus four championship match at survivor series where typically you know the titles aren't on the line but i would put the titles on the line for that matchup between bailey and sasha that's the only way to book that one. That's a good fantasy booking. I doubt WWE does it that way. That's just how I would do that one 100%. Now, as far as the rest of the matches go, I guess we can start off with Apollo Crews and MVP. You guys know that this is the United States Championship match. We have the uh, relatively new Apollo Crews, right? The relatively new Apollo Crews as champion. Now, there's a couple things you could do here, okay? You could do... One thing you could do is you could absolutely just have Apollo Crews retain, right? I mean, that's the logical thing to do is just have Apollo Cruz retain but another thing you could do is you could have my boy Cedric Alexander have Cedric Alexander you guys know that backstage they've been teasing it they've been teasing it he's been kind of talking with MVP I know that he has rejected MVP but uh I've seen a little bit of deviation in the eyes of Cedric Alexander all right I could totally see him turning heel and low blowing Apollo Cruz costing him the U.S. championship and you know joining you know joining the faction or the stable the team of MVP and Bobby Lashley I think that'd be a nice little three-way. You could have Ricochet, you know, trying to decide which side to join. I don't really see Ricochet working out as a heel, so I feel like Ricochet would probably do better as a babyface. And so maybe you could have Ricochet and Apollo Crews join up to take on Bobby Lashley and Cedric Alexander or MVP and Cedric Alexander, because MVP would be the U.S. champion then, so I don't know what you'd do from there. Maybe you could build up Cedric Alexander in that heel stable, have him eventually take on Lashley, have him eventually take on MVP for the U.S. title, possibly. I'm not sure, but I think right now the best case scenario is just leaving the championship on Apollo Crews. Maybe Cedric wants to join the Hill Stable. That's fine. But for now, I think Apollo Crews' champion is for the best. But if you wanted to build up Cedric, put him in that stable, I think that would work out great. Now, we're moving on from that one. We got to go into our eye for an eye match, all right? We have our eye for an eye match between Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio. Probably one of the matches I'm most looking forward to. I'm just excited to see how they book this thing because I really don't know where the hell they're going with it. You know, all the men involved, right? You got Kevin Owens. You got Humberto Carrillo. You got Aleister Black. Austin Theory. Buddy Murphy. Rey Mysterio. Dominic. Seth Rollins. So many guys involved in this one feud, and I just do not know what they're going to do with that. Uh, I think this is going to be either a cinematic match or, you know, they're going to use some sort of CGI to remove somebody's eyeball. 
which for me, I think fits Seth Rollins more. I think that his eye being ripped out with an eye patch with his all-black attire just looks right. Uh, Rey Mysterio, we've already seen, right? We've already seen a little black covering over his eye, so it's basically like he already has lost his eye to an extent. I don't know where you go from that unless you're trying to write him off television or get him out of the company, which I did hear that he, uh, I feel like I heard somewhere that he might not have re-signed with the company or his contract expired and he's not even under contract right now. He's just kind of working with WWE directly. So I don't know how all that's going to pan out, but if it were me fantasy booking it, I think a cool thing to do would have maybe, I, I'm not a fan of Dominic, but may, I know it's another heel turn, but maybe turn Dominic heel on his father and you could have him low blow him or help Seth Rollins cost Rey Mysterio. Dominic joins the Monday Night Messiah faction with Seth Rollins, Buddy Murphy, Austin Theory. You have your four guys there and then Rey Mysterio goes off to do whatever he wants to do and you could have Dominic there. I just don't know where he would build to, right? I mean, I know he's very young and I guess this would work for him, but I see him getting lost in the shuffle in that role. So I guess maybe even if he doesn't join Monday Night Rollins or, or he doesn't join the Messiah or the Disciples there... He could just turn heel on his father and have it be a heel going forward, but I just feel like he doesn't fit in that role. I, I, I am just fantasy booking right here. So maybe you could have Dominic help Ray, and you, then you lead to Seth Rollins have the eye patch. Because I just don't see Dominic turning heel and be it like Buddy Murphy and Austin Theory are much bigger names. They're, they're better wrestlers right now. They're just overall much better than Dominic right now. And I just don't see it working out with him being among those other guys. I know you could compare it to like Randy Orton, Batista, Triple H, and Ric Flair, and everything. Evolution, but that was totally different. Those guys were like one of a kind, and Randy Orton was just like a, a freak of nature in that role. So was Batista, along with Triple H and Ric Flair. I mean, that's that's a god-tier stable right there, man. I just don't see that uh, being like a good comparison for the Monday Night Messiah and Disciples right there. So, I would either have Dominic help to lead to an eye patch with Seth, or I would say turn heel just for shits and giggles. Little pop of, you know, what the hell's going on. Maybe he could disappear for a while. That's what I'd do for that one. Now, if we're moving on on to the Blue Universal Championship match. I want to save the WWE title for last, but for the Universal Championship match, for this one, for me, you know, the title's not on the line, so there's not a lot you can really do with this, but maybe, I mean, you could lead to a little brain control, right? I mean, we got the old Bray Wyatt character. Maybe you could take over Bray, uh, Braun Strowman's mind, controlling him like a puppeteer, being the puppet master. Nobody can stop him. And then you could bring uh, Roman Reigns back at SummerSlam to dethrone him is what I would think WWE would do. But you could do a really cool mind control gimmick with the, you know, bringing back the black sheep mask, bringing back the old Braun Strowman, growing his hair out, looking scraggly from the swamp with Bray Wyatt as his leader slash manager, having the Fiend kind of mix in there. You could have the Fiend mix in there. Maybe you could even lead to a tag team between the Fiend and the mind-controlled Strowman, kind of like we see on Vindication. You guys know with like Kane and Braun Strowman, if you guys haven't seen my pick fed, that's all we do there. I don't know. That's just what I would do. I would have Bray, Bray Wyatt win the swamp match or the swamp fight. I heard they recorded it last night. Um, uh, have a little mind control, take over Braun Strowman somehow with his with his mind games and his wizardry. You could possibly tie in the Fiend, but Firefly Firefly Funhouse Bray and Swamp Bray and the Fiend kind of tying in with Braun Strowman and their roots and where Braun, Stro uh, Braun Strowman started. I don't know, man. You could do something really, really creative. Create this big ultimate heel monster where Braun Strowman doesn't have to run around and smash things and stuff. He's just being controlled. And Bray Wyatt would be his little handyman there controlling all the pieces and doing the little dibbity dibbity. And then you could have your big baby face come back, Roman Reigns at SummerSlam or something like that, and dethrone him if you wanted to. Or just have a good old feud right there. I know that's not really... Roman Reigns at Braun Strowman's not a match I want to see because we've seen it so many times. But maybe it doesn't have to be Roman Reigns. Maybe it'd be a different babyface. I don't know who that is. I'm just pitching ideas here. But that's all I really could come up with for this one because at the end of the day, I'm sure Bray Wyatt's going to win. Championship's not on the line. Maybe he falls into the swamp, gets mind controlled. I'm not sure. I'm just I'm just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And for our main event, or for the last matchup that I wanted to cover, we have the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Now, I am a huge Dolph Ziggler fan. I like Drew McIntyre a lot. Now, one thing, I, I feel it was like, I, I think it was on the Busted Open uh, podcast or Busted Open radio or, or whoever that is. They said that uh, a cool stipulation would be, uh, you know, how Dolph Ziggler has not picked the stipulation yet. I heard it was going to be a TLC match, but they 
mention possibly doing like a no Claymore kicks allowed and if Drew McIntyre were to use the Claymore kick, Dolph Ziggler would then win the matchup and win the WWE Championship. Now, one thing you could do is have Drew McIntyre use the Claymore kick. It'd probably make him look stupid, but maybe Dolph Ziggler keeps on, you know, pushing the buttons and pushing the buttons and he keeps kicking out of everything Drew's got, everything he tries, every big move off the top rope. Nothing is putting Ziggler down. So maybe Drew just slips up, hits him with a Claymore kick and he doesn't realize what he's done. He loses the championship and that keeps him strong because he didn't he didn't tap out. He didn't get pinned. He loses the championship. So the championship would then go to Dolph Ziggler. So the WWE Championship would be on Dolph Ziggler. I know everybody's like, what the hell? This isn't realistic. I know. I'm just, again, I'm throwing shit at the wall. We're just kind of having fun with it. So my boy Dolph Ziggler would be champion and everybody would be like, oh my God, Brad, look at that. Dolph Ziggler, WWE Champion. I'd be losing my damn mind. And then out of nowhere, Brad, did you forget? No, you didn't. Mr. Money in the Bank Otis, who already has a past with Dolph Ziggler, right? They go way back. They have the Mandy Rose storyline. They have fought many times. We know what's going on. Otis cashes in his Money in the Bank briefcase on Dolph Ziggler, and he wins the WWE Championship. Otis Buckaroo Carlson Clay wins the WWE Championship, and that is how your Extreme Rules closes. Otis is WWE Champion, Mandy Rose by his side and he's riding high. Now, honestly, that sounds god-awful. I would not want that to happen. Again, this is just being fun, and I'm just trying to have fun with it. So, Dolph Ziggler would be WWE Champion for a second. That makes me happy. Um, you don't really need to have this happen at all, okay? This does not need to happen whatsoever, but I could totally see WWE pulling some bullcrap like this. Can you see it happening? I can see it happening, man. Anything is possible in the eyes of WWE, and I could totally see it happening. I honestly think that a lot of people would enjoy it. I, for one would not be one of those people. I just don't see Otis in that light of a WWE Champion main event guy, but you know what? They have the money in the bank on him, and I wouldn't even be shocked if they did this. So, I don't know. But I will tell you this. At Extreme Rules, this is not going to happen, okay? This will not be the scene. Dolph Ziggler won't win. Otis won't cash in. It will be none other than Drew with McIntyre. This is the only this is the only thing that should happen. Drew McIntyre retaining his WWE Championship, but I hope you guys had a lot of fun with the fantasy booking. If you guys have your own fantasy booking ideas down below, again, I didn't put a ton of thought of this into this. I just kind of ran with it and thought it would be a pretty cool video for you guys. And I know you guys enjoy the fantasy booking style video, so maybe I can do some more as we approach each pay-per-view. Maybe we can do a fantasy booking each pay-per-view as we go from here. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Thank you so much again for 200,000 subscribers, guys. You guys are the best. You are what makes this channel possible. And without you, I would not be anywhere. And I, I appreciate you guys more than anything you could ever imagine. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do for 200k, but we will think of something. If you guys have any cool ideas down in the comment section below, please let me know. But I'm getting out of here, guys. I'm still working on Vindication. The time has just not been working in my favor. I thought for e it'd be done forever ago, and we're still working on it, so I apologize greatly. It is coming soon, but I love you guys. Thank you so very much for all everything you do. Liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. You guys are the absolute greatest. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.